Hi, my name is Anatole Kreitzer, and today I'm going to be telling you about how concepts from business that you've learned about in this course actually apply to your academic lab as well. So you've learned about the value proposition. In other words, why is the work important and what is unique about the technology or product? But this also applies to the academic lab. For example, is your lab primarily need-based? Is it addressing a question? Or is it technology-based? Are you developing new tools? So for my laboratory, uh, we care a lot about uh, systems neuroscience questions, such as uh, how is movement uh, organized and planned, and how is that disrupted in Parkinson's disease? In other words, my laboratory is primarily a need-based uh, laboratory. But we, of course, rely on technology uh, to address our questions. And so we rely on both the whys and the whats. So for us, the whats of my research program are essentially the techniques and tools that we bring to bear on the questions. Now, the questions, of course, are primary, but the techniques are absolutely critical. So for example, we use imaging technologies. We use electrical recordings from the brain. We do sophisticated behavioral measurements. And these are all the what's of my research program. But we didn't develop these tools myself. Uh, instead, we use them to focus on critical questions related to uh, adaptive motor control and its disruption in uh, movement disorders and diseases such as Parkinson's disease. So who are the stakeholders that I think about and care about most? Well, primary would be my peer scientists. So as you uh, saw, it, when you thought about stakeholders uh, in industry, there are also a set of uh, stakeholders uh, for academia. And research peers is solidly in the middle. And the reason the research peers are so fundamental is because they evaluate your work for almost all of your other stakeholders. So for example, when you want to publish a paper in a journal, that paper is going to be reviewed by your academic peers. When you want to get funded uh, by the National Institutes of Health, for example, your peers are going to be reviewing your grants. Similarly, if you want to get promoted, uh, you want your department chair to recognize uh, your value, your department chair will actually get evaluations from your peers. Furthermore, if you want to get good postdoctoral fellow applicants, those are going to be coming from the laboratories of your peers. So for me, my number one academic stakeholder uh, is my, my academic research peers. However, uh, individual stakeholders, such as my employees, are obviously treated quite differently. And I think my second most important stakeholder are the people in my laboratory itself. Because fundamentally, in order to run a successful laboratory, similarly to running a successful business, uh, one needs to have quality employees. And of course, that is really the heart and soul of the laboratory. So next, uh, we're going to talk about how the organizational context uh, influences uh, academic lag. Now, you learned about how organizational context is important uh, in the developmental cycle of a business and how it helps structure uh, a particular enterprise. But in the laboratory, I think many of the same concepts apply. So for example, whereas in industry, one might have a, de a developmental cycle for various projects uh, or drugs or what have you, uh, in, in the lab, one has uh, academic projects that ultimately will become publishable units. Uh, and so you know, we, I have a number of people in my lab, probably about 10 people. And each of those people is responsible for driving a particular project forward. Now, I have projects really at all stages uh, in my laboratory. I have uh, projects in their very infancy where we're really brainstorming ideas and you know, coming up with uh, interesting, exciting hypotheses. Often these are driven by people new to the lab. Uh, now, there are also projects that are sort of midway where we've really explored uh, questions and developed some fascinating pilot data. We may have even written some grants. Uh, but these projects have not come to fruition. And then lastly, we have projects that are actually almost finished. And we're in the you know, final stages of preparing manuscripts, putting together figures, trying to get this work published. So uh, in my laboratory, there's always uh, various projects at different developmental stages. And that is absolutely critical for uh, continued productivity in the lab. And this is you know, quite similar to uh, business strategy in which you want to have multiple uh, products in the pipeline at all times. So I would say I like to have uh, roughly um, a regular turnover of people in the lab, so new students coming in every couple of years, and therefore new projects being developed uh, every couple of years. And that really ensures a continuous productivity.
Now, in terms of organizational capability, uh, I've actually chosen to have my lab split about 50-50 between graduate students and postdocs, and we have two research support staff. And so this was actually a very intentional allocation of resources on my part. Graduate students, I think, are really the uh, creative force in a laboratory. They, they bring uh, new ideas, they're willing to take risks, and when they leave the lab, they don't take those projects with them. Uh, so they really help build your laboratory. Uh, in contrast, postdoctoral fellows come to the lab they're already trained. Uh, they get projects up and running quickly. Usually they're a little bit more risk averse. Um, so they tend to go after more solid projects. And when they leave the lab, they actually take those projects with them. And that actually reduces really the sorts of topics that you can work on in your laboratory. On the other hand, they tend to be a little bit more productive. So I think it's really important to have a balance between these two uh, types of people in the lab. Finally, the support staff is really an important strategic decision. How, much, how many resources do you allocate towards supporting uh, the uh, other, the graduate students and the postdocs in the lab? And you know, because this really is a zero-sum game, you have to you know, figure out for any individual laboratory how, how, much, how much resources should be devoted to uh, you know, supporting people in the lab. So for me, uh, in terms of strategy, I really am thinking about both near and long-term strategies. Um, in the near term, I'm mainly a project manager. Uh, I'm meeting with people regularly, trying to bring projects to completion, to publication. Um, but at the same time, I have to be thinking five to 10 years out. So this is really the long-term vision of the laboratory. You know, What new areas are we going to go into? What new techniques are coming online that we can bring to bear to address really exciting uh, questions? Um, so this is really a more long-term vision, and I think you need to think about both of these things in parallel. And this really applies both to the business setting as well as the academic setting. Now, finally, I think uh, you know, running an academic laboratory really it does involve a number of trade-off decisions involving resource allocation. I alluded to one of those earlier when I mentioned you know, how, much, uh, how much money should we devote to support staff versus primary researchers. Uh, but these sort of decisions come, uh, come up all the time. For example, you know, do you want to devote more uh, resources to imaging, for example? Do I want to buy a new microscope? Or do I want to devote more resources to electrophysiology and recording from the brain? So this is just for my particular case. Um, these are really fundamental decisions that impact the kind of data that you can acquire and ultimately the kinds of questions you can address. And so really you need to take into account your long-term strategic plan uh, when you develop these uh, sort of trade-off decisions. So with that, uh, I thank you for listening, and I hope I've uh, illuminated some of the parallels between uh, academia and uh, industry strategy. Thank you.